what is up my friends? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be working inside of Envision Studio. I'm gonna show you how to make some pretty intricate screen to screen transitions without a whole lot of effort. And that's really the power of using a tool like Studio, which allows you to kind of design, prototype, animate all in one tool. Now typically in my day to day, it's not my main UI design tool. A lot of you guys ask me this, um, but for these concept projects and like these personal projects that I'm not necessarily, you know, handing off to a developer or, you know, adding or building to a design system, it's great to just do everything kind of in Studio. Typically I would just use Figma and then maybe import to a tool like Studio or even After Effects to animate. But sometimes it's just really convenient and fun to do everything all in the same tool. And this should be a pretty good example of a project that uh, lends itself well to Studio. So what we have here is some sort of soccer player UI. So we have like a selection carousel here of a bunch of players. Maybe this is like top players in Europe and the ability to go right to view the next player in the carousel. Ultimately, the user is going to select Ronaldo and it's gonna to transition to this screen, this detail view of Ronaldo. And I also designed some other screens. So like once the user's in this flow, they can maybe scroll down the page and get some, maybe some stats about Ronaldo, maybe some awards he's won and whatnot. But I think for the sake of this tutorial, we'll just transition from this screen to this screen. Now, I do first want to illustrate what happens when the user clicks on this next arrow here, just to view the next player in the carousel. So what I'm going to do is just move the screen over and I'm going to duplicate it. Then I'm going to select all these players. And there's actually a player off to the right here that you can't see. It's Neymar. And I'm just going to slide everything over like so, just to reveal Neymar. And also in the state, I'm going to reveal this left arrow because now we've scrolled to the right we want to be able to go back to where we were. So what I've done here is I've basically created an initial state and an end state of an animation. And now we just need a way to get from state to state. So the user is going to tap on this button. So with this arrow selected, let's hit C on our keyboard. We'll go to this state. The trigger is going to be a click. We're going to navigate to select two. Duration, let's make maybe a half a second. And let's go to the edit timeline to see what's happening. So we hit play or we press spacebar. And without me having to keyframe any layers or anything, Studio has already automatically animated the difference between the similar layers on the different screens. So you can really leave this here. This, this is definitely sufficient and would be actually really easy to code and develop. But we can go a step further and add a little more Sorry, there's a bird chirping outside my room. Um, we can add a little more nuance to this animation. Maybe we want to delay each subsequent player. Just kind of stagger them, make it a little more dynamic feeling. So maybe we'll delay Messi slightly after Pogba. And one way to accomplish this, instead of actually delaying the, the time, so like this is keyframe one, this is keyframe two, instead of delaying the entire time like this, you can actually just make Messi take a bit longer so when I hit play, Messi is slightly staggered. I'm also gonna actually stagger the Messi text even a little after that. And then I'll, I'll delay Ronaldo a little after Messi. And then I'll delay the Ronaldo text a little after. Same thing with Neymar. We'll delay him a little after Ronaldo and then just delay his text a little after. So just by creating these subtle time differences, we've created a bit of a parallax effect here. It's very subtle. When I was designing this, I actually intentionally kind of overlapped the text with the player just to create like a little bit of a visual depth of field, right? So we have a background element and a foreground element. And I did that intentionally because I knew once I go to animate this, I wanted to kind of accentuate that depth even more with motion. And just by making the text take a little longer than the players themselves, we have a very slight parallax because they're moving the same distance at slightly different rates. So it's a, it's a little hack you can use to create a little more depth in these flat 2D environments, right? This is not a 3D animation tool, but there are some things you can do just to create a little more optical depth here. 
So that's looking pretty good. And let's just create a link to go back. So same thing, hit C on our keyboard, click, motion. We could parallax it on the way back, but in the interest of time, we'll just keep it regular. So let's just see what we have. I can click back and forth, so this is looking really good. Now, I also want to, before I make our selection, before we select Ronaldo and transition to this screen, let's illustrate what happens when you hover on Ronaldo, right? We can add a little more interactivity with a hover state. So I think in this state, I basically just want Ronaldo to scale up. So I'm just scaling up his entire container here. So to do this, I'm actually holding shift option and then just dragging this middle point up. So it's scaling up from that point. I'm just gonna bump him up a little just so he's kind of centered in the viewport as he scales up. And now I'm also gonna add a shadow to this entire container here. I'm gonna make this a nice blurry drop shadow. Let's take this Y value to zero. Oops. Increase the blur even more and then just take the opacity of the shadow down. So it's a nice soft shadow. I'm also going to, there's an inner shadow on this container just to like account for these dividers here. I just added a little inner shadow instead of a border. I don't know why I did that. I probably should have just added a border, but <laughs> sometimes I do that. We can just take this inner shadow opacity all the way down. So now what we'll do is create a link from Ronaldo here to Ronaldo here. So C, connect to this screen. This one's gonna be a mouse over for a hover state. And this is just a hover state, so I don't think it has to take that long, maybe 0.3 seconds. So let's preview what we have all together. So we start here, we slide over to this state, and we hover on Ronaldo. Awesome. And if we want, what we can do is do a little mouse out back to the screen. But really, you know, if I were mousing out onto Neymar, he would actually kind of scale up, but you know, I'm not gonna design every single screen. This is just a prototype. But yeah, that's looking good. Actually, you know what? There's one more thing I wanna do. Just to create a little more hierarchy in this hover state, what we can do is uh, maybe take this guy and this guy and take their opacity down just like ever so slightly, just to make Ronaldo the focal point even more so. See what that looks like. Yeah, I'm liking that a lot. Cool. But now, before we go from this state to this state, I think there's one more state I want to add because I want this transition to be very clean and fluid. Um, let's duplicate the screen once more. And what I'm thinking, the motion I'm thinking is I want Ronaldo to sort of fill the viewport. So I want this mask layer here to just kind of grow from the middle out to the sides. But before I do that, since this is sort of gonna be pushing outwards to each edge, maybe I wanna play off that and have Messi and Neymar also sort of move out to the edge. So maybe Messi will move ever so slightly to the left and Neymar will move ever so slightly to the right because I'm trying to make this animation nice and consistent, right? We want continuity. So we have the mask pushing out as well as these players sort of pushing out. And we'll play off that even more with these arrows here. Maybe I want this arrow to slide off to the left and we want this one to slide off the right. And I'm also gonna fade out the Ronaldo text here because if you look at the end state of this transition, going to say his name on the left and it's going to actually reveal this Juventus logo on the right so we can actually get rid of the text here just by fading it out and if you'll notice um, it's zero opacity right now but I do have the Juventus logo behind him but it's just faded out initially so on click now I'm going to add another click interaction to get here let's uh Let's go to the edit timeline actually, just preview what happens when you click on Ronaldo. Nice, so we get this mask kind of pushing everything off the respective sides of the screen. I think I do want to accelerate this a bit though, so 
instead of ease both, let's do a ease in. So it's gonna ease into its fastest point or accelerate. But I think I want it a little more aggressive. So I'm just like adding a little more tension to it. There we go. And maybe it takes even less time. And this actual, this layer here doesn't need to accelerate. We can just ease this both. There we go. So now that, now I'll show you what we have all together. Start here. Go to the next state, hover state, click state. And now once we're here, I want this screen to time out to the detail view. So we wanna make sure all the elements that need to be on both screens are on both screens. So I'm just gonna copy and paste all this stuff. Oh, actually, let me just make sure this stuff is part of the group. I'm gonna group that and call this news. So I'm gonna copy and paste all the stuff on here to this screen. I'm gonna fade out this text because it's not gonna be visible initially. And I want this panel here to slide in from the left. So initially I'm just gonna move it off the screen. So now I just want this screen to automatically time out to this detail view. So I'm not actually gonna press anything on this screen. It's just gonna time out. So I'm gonna hit this little icon here. I'm gonna hit the stopwatch. There's gonna be a timeout transition. And we're gonna to navigate to the detail view. So it's gonna time out immediately. That's what the zero second timeout means. So right away, it's gonna time out. And this is a pretty dramatic transition. So I usually like to make these take a bit more time. It's kind of a general rule of thumb. More dramatic transition should take a tiny bit longer. Otherwise, they'll feel a little jarring. And let's actually go to the edit timeline and preview what that looks like. So it's pretty nice. I do want to delay this stuff. So I don't want this stuff to fade in until this panel is established. And actually, before I do that, I think I want it to happen a little faster. This is too long. Yeah, that timing feels better. And now let's, uh, sorry, there's a helicopter going by. We will uh, delay this stuff coming in a little, even more. So basically this panel looks is looking like it's pushing Ronaldo to the right. Now one thing I want to do though, I want to make sure that these are sort of aligned um, on the bottom. So I'm just going to draw out this guide and I want to, you see how Ronaldo's foot here does not match his foot here. I'm just going to make sure that, let's see. So I want to move him up one, two, whoops, let's take a shadow with him. One, two, three. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to move this entire hover state up. One, two, three. Let's hide those rulers. And let's preview what this looks like now. And something weird happened there. What happened? Oh. This Ronaldo needs to move up three or 30 pixels. There we go. That was nice and smooth. But one thing I want to do on this timeout transition, I want to change the easing to ease out. So I want to decelerate stuff because we have stuff coming in. So usually stuff that enters the viewport, we want to decelerate it. And when we mess with the easing, sometimes we have to also adjust the timing of some stuff. So I'm going to actually delay the stuff even more. And that's looking pretty good. So from the top, start at the player select. Hover, and we get this nice, smooth, seamless transition to this detail view. One more time.
And actually, because we eased that stuff out, we decelerated it coming in, it's really fast initially. So I actually just wanna kind of hack this. I want this timeout to take a bit more time. So instead of timing out immediately, just to compensate for that ease out, I'm gonna make it time out 0.2 seconds. So that should help a little, let's see. Yeah, that felt better. And I still wanna delay this stuff a little more coming in here. And this stuff actually doesn't need to decelerate. This stuff can just ease both because it's not like sliding in or anything. It's just like fading in. But now it's taking too long, right? So I adjusted the, the easing. We got to compensate a little on the timing. A little bit more. And maybe it doesn't need to take so long to fade in. Yeah. All right, from the top. Very smooth and seamless. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. I hope you learned a lot. Um, I hope you can see the value in prototyping in a tool like Studio. I'm doing some pretty complex stuff that would take me a really long time to do in a tool like After Effects. And I think the result is pretty much exactly the same that I would get in After Effects. One nice thing about After Effects is you can kind of completely control the timing of the interactions. So like for presenting your work, I think After Effects is a great tool. But if I wanted to actually, you know, hand off an interactive prototype with all the motion built in, that's something I can do in Studio. I can actually just upload this to Envision as I would a regular Envision prototype. And I can actually just share out a public link to this and have people click through it and test it. So that's one of the perks of using a tool like Studio and other interactive prototyping tools versus like After Effects. But yeah, guys, that's been it. If you found this helpful, please drop a comment, drop a like, subscribe for more videos like this. Let me know if you want me to continue this UI motion flow for this interface. I'm happy to you know, continue designing the rest of the transitions between screens. Um, if that's something you'd like to see, comment below. I'm also releasing a UI motion course very soon. I have a survey in the description that you guys can fill out. For those of you who fill it out, I'm gonna give a little discount. So definitely do that if you're interested and you wanna learn more of this stuff. I'm probably rambling now, so I'm gonna shut up and uh, that's been it. Talk to you guys in the next one.